I'm going to talk to you today about um, iPhone, which isn't you know your guys' product, but um, hopefully some of the lessons learned uh, will will translate for you guys. So talk about fuzzing, um, how how I find bugs, uh, and then I'll go into a bug I found and how I exploited it, and then a little bit at the end if I have time about payloads on mobile phones. So uh, what can bad guys, what code can they get running on your phone if they if they can find a bug and exploit it? Okay, so uh, who am I? Uh, I work for a company called Independent Security Evaluators. It's a consulting company from Baltimore. Uh, my claim to fame is I was the first one to hack an iPhone and uh, the G1 phone as well when it came out. Um, so that phone, the G1 phone, I actually hacked the day it came out because uh, I found some T-Mobile employee who was selling, selling his on eBay. So I got it like three days early. So uh, that's pretty cool. I was like... I was very suspicious the guy was trying to rip me off the whole time. I was like, how do I know that this is really a G1 phone? And, you know, and that's how I found it. He's like, oh, I work for T-Mobile. I was like, okay, I'll, I'll buy it. So uh, it, was, it was good. I, I still have that phone. And then, uh, so I was also the first hack, uh, Second Life, so that's fun if you ever, like, Google it. It's like I could take over someone's little avatar and make them run around and do stuff. Uh, and then I won this Pono contest the last two years, and I've written some books. Um, so check them out if you want. So this talk, uh, I gave two talks at Black Hat this year. Uh, so this is one about SMS and fuzzing and one about payloads. And this is basically both of those talks smashed into actually 55 minutes, so uh, you're going to miss out on a lot. If, if you want more details, check it out. It's all online. Uh, so the two talks were fuzzing the phone in your phone, which I did with Colin Wollner, who's a, someone, uh, he's a, like a postdoc in, in Germany, and a post-exploitation bliss interpreter for iPhone uh, with Vincenzo Iozzo, who's a student in uh, uh, technical school in Milan. All right, so um, what am I talking about? Basically, the iPhone stuff, <coughs> um, SMS, which you've already heard a bunch of from uh, uh, Zane and Luis today, so I'm not going to talk too much about that. Uh, Sully, which is a fuzzing framework, uh, how I get SMS messages, how I do the testing. Uh, most of the talk is going to be how I actually exploit it, because that's the thing that no one else really talks about. And then I'll, at the end, I'll talk about, uh, for the older version of iPhone, how you could do code injection which is like actually get shellcode running, and then uh, how you could leverage that to get Meterpreter, which is this other thing running too. All right, so this is the, the one slide I added uh, after I, I turned in my slides because I was afraid they wouldn't let me say it. But here, here is my letter from the research community to you guys. Stop rebooting my machine when I have IDA Pro open. It ruins my databases. So don't do that anymore. I, I can't tell you how many times that's happened. It never, re it never tries to reboot during the day. It's only when I'm asleep. All right, so iPhone. Uh, so um, first, uh, so, so how is iPhone set up? At, what's their security model? Um, so basically they did a few things to try to make iPhone hard to break into. One is they, they, they stripped out a lot of code. So it's basically OS X, like my computer, but uh, they took off a lot of stuff. Um, so they took off, uh, for example, BinSH. So there's no shell on the phone. So you can't have shell code that just execs BinSH because there is no SH. And even if you could get SH on there, like a shell, uh, then there's no LS, no PS, nothing like that. So there's nothing good on there um, to do. And, and then furthermore, even though like Safari will handle 100 different file formats, mobile Safari will only do like four formats. So there's just less code to find bugs in. Um, so uh, I guess I was talking about stripped on OS. <coughs> the other thing they do is code signing. So you can't just download a binary onto the phone and run it. It has to be signed by Apple. Um, so do they do memory randomization? No, so they didn't do any memory randomization, but uh, really no one in the mobile space does that because I don't know why. I guess it takes up too much. Uh, the, the people at Android have said it takes up too much processing, but uh, you know, no one does it. Neither does iPhone. So sandboxing, so uh, when you download a, <coughs> a program from the, the, the App Store, it runs in a restrictive sandbox, so the theory is even if someone can break into this, this process, no one cares because they can't do anything. Like, you can't dial the phone. I don't think, at least. Uh, it can't send SMS messages. There's certain files it can't access, so they do sandboxing. Um, memory protection, so uh, they basically have depth on the, on the device. And this was before, so the iPhone had depth like a year before OS X had depth. So it's actually ahead of the game. And, um, and they have a, a stronger version of depth that you can't turn it off. So uh, you know, usually you can, uh, there's no pages that are writable and executable. But uh, you can set a page to be writable and then, you know, throw some magic fairy dust and make it executable. But on iPhone, you can't do that, at least by design. There's no, once a page is writable, you can never execute it. So that's, a, that's another thing that they probably didn't put in for, you know, to make exploitation harder. They probably put it in to protect, you know, uh, 
the app store apps from doing crazy things, but it turns out that it makes it really hard to exploit. All right, so what about iPhone research? So iPhone 1.0 came out in June 2007, so uh, it's been like, a little over two years now. And uh, it was not a secure device when it came out. It was, it was a very you know, rushed out the door like most products. So everything ran as root, that's not good. Uh, There's no such thing as sandboxing, no SLR, no depth, no code signing, so anything ran. Uh, it was hacked within a couple weeks by me and a couple other guys. Uh, and there were at least three public remote code exploits. And of course, since everything runs as root, these are remote root exploits, so pretty bad. Um, they're all, all, all three bugs, as far as I know, were in, uh, you know, ac accessible through mobile Safari. So they were all, my, I had two JavaScript ones, I think, and then someone else found one in, like, TIFF, I think, <coughs> some image format. So, uh, oh, and the other interesting thing, to show how easy this was, uh, so, so, you know, now there's these jailbroken iPhones and all this stuff, right? So when I, when I hacked into it, there was no such thing as a jailbroken phone. No one had, had done that yet. So I had no shell, nothing. I had no, you know, debugger. Uh, the way that I was able to do it, because it, it was, there was so little security, was I could crash it, right? So I found the bug in, in Safari. So uh, finding the bug was, was easy, and it, the same bug was in mobile Safari. But uh, I could crash the thing, and then I could plug it into my computer, and I could get, uh, like, the, you know, the Dr. Watson equivalent. So I could get the crash report off it. I could say, okay, uh, yeah, this looks like, a, you know, a, a heap overflow. And so just by, like, trial and error, I was able to get an actual exploit working. So... If they would have had anything like ASLR or anything like DEP, there's no way I could have done it. So uh, it just goes to show you that those are actually good, good, device, or good tools to, to do in security. Okay, iPhone 2 came out last summer. That's when they added a lot of stuff. So in iPhone 1, there, there was no app store. You couldn't download programs. You were, they expected you to use everything over the web, but you know, they were stupid. So it turns out people actually like to download programs and run them. So uh, they included app store. There was an SDK you know, with an emulator, and they, they added all sorts of stuff. So, of course, all the stuff they added wasn't for security. It was to protect, you know, protect you. Well, security from, from App Store apps, really. So uh, that's why they added the sandboxing. Uh, they added uh, DEP. Uh, they added code signing. Now everything runs as, as user mobile, um, except the things that, that, that can't. Uh, so there's lots of security. And I'll talk at the end about a way I figured out to get around this, like, DEP can never be turned off thing, which is, uh, but they fixed that later. So anyway, iPhone 2 came out. Big, big change. It's very secure compared to iPhone 1. And, and the big thing that, that is you know, proof in some sense that, that it's better, or maybe just me and the other guy who did iPhone research didn't look at it, is uh, there's no known public uh, remote code exploits for iPhone 2 or 3. Um, and Pwn known, if you had one, you could get 10 grand, and no one had one. So uh, it's, it was, uh, it was uh, more secure, put it that way. Um, iPhone 3 came out this summer, and they added some stuff like MMS. They fixed the depth bug I found, uh, still no ASLR, and uh, basically, because it had depth, it was more secure than Leopard, but it's actually less secure than Snow Leopard, because Snow Leopard has some, at least some ASLR. All okay, right, so that's iPhone, uh, you know, iPhone 101. Uh, let's move on to uh, SMS. So, uh, so you've already heard a lot about SMS, so I'll, I won't go into too much detail. Um, but basically... Uh, SMS is just some, some extra stuff that, that, that uh, extra bandwidth in the control channel that, that carriers can send data to your phone. And it's, it's what, like when a phone is about to ring, the carrier sends some, some data over this extra bandwidth that says, hey, phone, you know, you, you got a call coming in ring. Um, so you can also send in uh, message data of up to 140 bytes, which is 160 characters. Um, and that's what, when you send text messages to your friends, hey, you know, meet me at the party. This is what it is. It's an SMS. So SMS isn't the same thing as text messages. Text messages uses SMS. Um, you can also deliver binary data besides just you know text like hey what's going on. You can send in uh, for some phones, not the iPhone. You can do you can actually pro do over the air programming. Um, you can you can download ringtones with SMS that sort of thing. But the point is that you can't turn off SMS. It's too important. Like your phone won't ever ring if you turn off SMS. You uh, you won't ever be able to make a call if you if you turn off SMS. So it's essential for for phones. Um, so, so why did I decide to look at SMS? And, and actually, I wasn't the only one, right? So when Black Hat came out, there were like three talks, maybe four, on SMS. And none of us had talked to each other about this. So it's like, why did all of a sudden all these researchers think SMS was important to look at? And, and this is at least the reason I looked at it. So all phone, like modern phones uh, handle SMS. So, you know, that's good. Uh,